Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Hi, this is uh, Clint Yerke from the Canola Council of Canada, and I guess today we're going to take a look at uh, how to scout for the maturity of your canola crop, in particular uh, judging your swath timing and trying to make the, the right decision on, on how to uh, swath your crop properly. So um, the, one of the first and most important points I, I think that you need to look at when you're trying to decide uh, when to swath your canola crop is to consider the, uh, how even the maturity is on your crop. This particular crop actually looks fairly uniform in its maturity but if your plant stand was non-uniform to, to begin with then you might actually have a couple of different maturing crops within your, your field. And, um, those are the toughest fields to, to decide as to when to swath them and the, the challenge and maybe even the art of, of making that decision really comes down to you deciding which part of that crop is, uh, contains the most yield. Um, so what you want to do when, if you do have a, a non-uniform crop is to get out and try to assessing each of those different maturing uh, components of that crop to determine which, uh, which ones are, are the ready to swath at any particular time. So this particular crop actually looks quite uniform, so this one's going to be a little bit easier. Um, but the, the basics are that you want to check a few different areas within, your, within the canola crop to make sure that you are getting a, a, a good sample across the entire field. Make sure that you're not missing any uh, low spots, high spots that might be of different maturity. Try to select areas that are going to be representative. So we're going to take a look at this one right near the field entry point to see, uh, to see how this one is coming along for maturity. So when you're sampling a canola crop, uh, best thing to do is, is when you walk in is, is to grab five, six, seven plants that you think are fairly representative of that sample that you want to make. So we'll take a couple right now. Ground is a little hard here. So we've got a few plants here. Now the time that we are looking at, this is a little bit early to be making any swathing decisions, but if you do want to uh, to get out and do some scouting, this is essentially what you want to do. As you take your canola plant that you have and try to find the, the main raceme. Usually with most canola plants, the main raceme, the first flowering branch is, is going to have the majority of the yield. So that's always going to be the, the most central one. So the easiest way to find the most central one is to bend down the, the secondary branches first. And here you're left with the main raceme. And to determine uh, whether or not you're ready to swath this is uh, you need to do, uh, sample pods from three different parts of the uh, of the raceme, so the bottom, middle, and top components. And then what we want to do is you need to zoom in on this. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is just to break these pods open and take a look at the seeds that are that are in here. Like I said, this is uh, this is not the appropriate stage to be doing your swath timing, but if you were in the, in the field to do that, you want to look at the number of seeds that have actually changed color. To do that is any one of these seeds that show any amount of browning on it would be considered to be one seed that has changed color. The, uh, the threshold for making, uh, to actually swath is 60% uh, seed color change. So 60% is, is the optimal time to, to swath a canola crop if you are going to be uh, swathing it. Um, the long-term data that has been generated on the different times or stages that you can swath a crop, 60% has consistently come out as achieving the highest uh, levels of yield consistently. So when you're making that decision, sample from three parts of the plant count all of the seeds that have turned color and count the ones that are not turned color and once you get to that 60 percent that's uh, your ideal timing. So you don't want to make your decision on one plant. You, you need to take four or five from uh, a number of different locations in the field, maybe four or five from this part of the field, go to the opposite corner, do about five samples within the field, get a good cross, cross representation and then that will help you in making that decision as to whether or not you are at that 60 percent seed color change.
If we're finding that um, our crop is branching quite a bit, we still ignore the branches? Ah, uh, yeah, great question. So this year and, and, and other years, sometimes you might find that your main flowering raceme or main potting branch has a bunch of aborted pods on it. And a lot of the pods might actually be uh, uh, not looking like they're gonna be contributing to all that much yield. So what you need to do then is to start looking at those secondary branches. Try to decide which, which branches are going to contribute the most yields to your overall um, crop. Now normally in most years if you did, haven't had any heat during the flowering period it's going to be that main raceme. But if you have a low plant stand, you only have two or three plants per square foot, then suddenly you might have uh, uh, a lot more branching that's, that's uh, in that crop. And so maybe it will be those side branches that you'll need to consider in order to decide whether or not to, to swath. So that's the art when it comes to, uh, to making that swathing decision is, is to determine um, where that bulk of that yield is in that plant and making that uh, assessment on that, that point. And then if we have multiple fields to do, should we try to time it so that the one with the greatest yield that we're doing it at 60%? Uh, yeah, if, if you've got hundreds of acres or thousands of acres of canola in which to swath, it does become hard to, to get 60% on, on every single field. You're, you're going to have to weigh out your logistics and, and what you can do in order to, to make that. Sometimes you're, you're going to have to swath early, sometimes you're going to have to swath late. Um, but trying to time it so that the majority of that crop is in that 60% phase is going to pay you the, the best return on, on, your, on that swathing investment. You can swath as, as early as 30%. I would not go earlier than 30% because you really do start cutting into your yield and uh, ultimately the quality of that, that crop that comes off. So if you do have to go early, try to get it at 30 and hopefully by the time you get to the end of your, your swathing uh, operation for your entire farm, uh, the majority of the crop is not shattering as you're moving through it. Mm -hmm.